Hi there, I'm Bob and I'm doing the New Testament reading for today. So we're in Ephesians chapter 2 today and this is a, the most awesome chapter. And it's not the most awesome chapter, but it is an awesome chapter. It's absolutely incredible. So it starts off with being made alive in Christ. And um, that's like the title that we get introduced to um, what Paul's about to write in this letter to the church in um, in Ephesus again and it is absolutely awesome what he says it's so cool um, I don't know how many times you've read it this morning but I just I just re read it over and over again it's like oh my gosh this is so good so good um, yeah it's just like he just talks about as for you it sounds quite harsh at first like, as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live um, you followed the ways of this world uh, and, and of the ruler of this kingdom um, and um, and and it kind of paints this picture of you used to be dead, um, and um, and you used to follow this way. Um, all, it said all of us lived like that, basically gra gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature. And actually, like he points to this thing that actually in in all of us there's this thing, this thing that's gone wrong, this thing that takes over, um, this sinful nature sometimes. Uh, well, which we all had, and and it's like ah, oh, we used to be like that. We used to have that. Um, and then it's um, it, there's this but in verse four. But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. And then I love this line: "It's by grace that you've been saved." And He goes on to explain what that means. Um, he says, "For it's by grace you've been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. Uh, it is a gift from God." and not by works. So no one can do it of themselves. No one's earned it, no one deserves it. Um, it's, it's grace. Um, it's only a gift from God that we can be made alive in Christ. And that's just, I just totally love this passage, it's so good. And then he, it gets even better because then he starts talking about being one in Christ and he starts sort of addressing, um, you know, as he's writing to what would have been a group of people who weren't necessarily from the Jewish tradition, he says, you know, it used to be that uh, that you guys were far from God and that the Jewish people were near to God. And, um, you know, and, and kind of he starts talking about this, the difference between one being, one being close to God and one being far away. And it's like now that that doesn't exist anymore. There's no near. There's there's no um, far away. We are one together and we have access to Jesus. We can be one people. Um, and it's, he, there's this theme of peace that comes through. It's like, no, no, he's 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 paid the price. He's given us peace that we might have relationship with him and be um, one people together. And he says he ends it by saying, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens um, with God's people, sorry, but fellow citizens with God's people, members of God's household, um, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. It's like, no, 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 no longer are you foreign, no longer are you unknown, no longer... Uh, do you not belong? Now you belong. And, and in fact, you belong so much um, that you're a part of a house that's been built with Jesus as the cornerstone. That's how important it is. That's how special it is. And that's uh, just such an amazing chapter to read. If ever you're in doubt of what to read in scripture, just go back to Ephesians 2, have a read. And it's like, yes, come on. We love it. Totally love it. So um, enjoy that one today. And uh, sorry, I'm getting excited, but it's just amazing. Great news.